Hey guys, Jaden2000 here, and today I'm going to be talking about the future of the channel here on um, YouTube. Basically, I've, I've been struggling to come up with ideas on what content I would like to produce, and I'd love you guys' input on the future of the channel. So basically, what content should I make? Should I cover in my videos? Like, what, what do you guys want me to make? Like, what, what do you want me to cover? Like, in detail? Like legends, like a legend tier list, like a weapon tier list, based on my opinions on the weapons and the and the legends in the game, and also ch future changes to the game, such as the hop ups coming to the lower tier weapons, such as um, detailed analysis on like core mechanics of the game, like bullet drop stuff like that. Um, I'd really, I'd really like to cover some of that stuff in the future, but I'd like to know that you guys at least want it. That that'd be good. That'd be good for me, just to know that you guys actually want that sort of content, so slow, and, and, especially because you guys are giving me a chance in hell at making it on YouTube. It, it'd be great if you if you guys could give me a few suggestions on, on videos you could on videos I could make, and it would it would, re, it would help me be, because if you make, give me a few suggestions then and they do work, like we can uh, we can make more videos based on that, or we can um. We can make more videos based on that, or we can get more people in, and then they can make more suggestions, and then it's an endless cycle, and that will start, like, the channel going, because I've seen a lot of good suggestions on, like, other channels and stuff on on future content they should make, and I'd really like to get to that stage, because that that's where, um, it's gonna be, like, a viewer-driven channel to a certain degree. And I thought I'd bring up a topic today that's very dear to my heart, because... I need to at least bring some something to the table from me, because it'd be pretty ridiculous if I just asked you guys for everything and did nothing myself. That's just stupid, in my opinion. So I'm going to be covering why Bloodhound is one of the worst characters in Apex Legends. And th this is very sad to me, because I fucking love this character. I love the abilities. I fucking... Main, mainly the ultimate, but I love the abilities, I love the concept. I looked at all the characters when I first started playing this game, right? And I picked Bloodhound, right? I never picked him for a competitive advantage. But then again, I always thought Solos was going to be in the what game eventually. Um, and I, I thought that ult was going to prevent me from getting shot in the back very easily, right? But I still get shot in the back a fair bit, so maybe I'll just... I don't know. Um, so basically, I'm going to be covering all the stats, all, all, all the unique components of the characters. And I'm going to be saying exactly why Bloodhound is one of the worst. I'm not saying he is the worst. Maybe Caustic or Gibraltar or one of, one of the other lower tier characters like Mirage are like lower than he is. But he's definitely not top tier. And um, I think this will break it down very well. So starting off with the hitbox. The hitbox is mediocre. you got a lot of upper body. So you're going to be taking a lot more damage to the chest, which means you're going to actually take more damage than if someone like with bigger legs, for example, maybe Octane, who has bigger legs, he'll take less damage from um, the shots that hit the legs, everyone who takes less damage from the shots that hit their legs over their chest or head, and Bloodhound is a very easy target to hit, let's be honest. Like, he's not fat like Gibraltar, but he's not, he's not exactly Pathfinder levels of, um, like, stupidly difficult compared to others. The passive is, I'd say, mediocre. I reckon Wraiths, Lifelines, and Gibraltars are all vastly superior. I, I do like the concept of the passive. It does it allows you to track targets very well. But following targets in this game is pretty stupid, considering the fact that while you're following someone, you're not looting up. And when, when you're not looting up, that means you're getting at a disadvantage straight off the bat, compared to them who are getting the loot at those places. Just following someone does not fit this game because you should be looting up or fighting people constantly throughout. If you're not if you're not doing either of those things, you're just wasting time, and you can't be doing that and if expect to win games. I do like it as just just general information, but I reckon race is just better. You just get to you just get told when someone's aiming at you. It's I reckon it's a lot better. Than that. Um, Bloodhounds. The tactical is what really kills it for me because of how bad it really is. It really only works up to ranges you can hear people at. Basically, it's only good for conveying information to your team. And, and about caustic, and about laden trap places, like trap houses, that caustic created. It, it's very good at showing you exactly what 
where the traps are in Caustic's house, but it's not really good for telling where hostiles are because you can already hear them, and footsteps give you a lot more information than that scare never will, because footsteps tell you if, if how, where your target's moving to a certain degree. If they're moving, like if they've stopped in a corner, you'll stop hearing footsteps. It's, it just gives you a lot more information. I reckon they could fix the scan by giving it more range, or, or like more usability, like they've got the patch coming out that gives you half a second of motion, which means you can tell where hostiles are going to be going after the scan, but that's not really going to be enough in my opinion, because um, it's still, like you can still have the footsteps, and the footsteps work just as well, and the scan works against you more than it works with you, because enemies can triangulate your exact location from a larger distance and you can view their location. It's not, it's not difficult to, to know where a bloodhound is based on the scan. It's, it's very simple. Also, this is just general general oh, quip. It should fly. It's shit. it's a light beam. It should fly at the speed of light. Why is it so slow? The scan should literally just be a momentarily like momentarily short burst. Like it shouldn't take a couple seconds to traverse the landscape. And like that just goes against the laws of physics. And I don't fucking like that. Um. So basically, as I was saying, that. They need to increase its usefulness, or make it, like, less risky to use, like, the fact that it takes away your weapon, like, pretty much all the tacticals do, but this is the one that really hurts you the most, because you use it right before you're gonna enter a gunfight, which means you can sometimes use it too late, and then get caught in a gunfight, while you're trying to scan them, and you're gonna get shot a lot, and because your hitbox isn't very good, you're probably gonna die, um... But the one saving grace, and probably why I've stick with Bloodhound all these, um, all these months, and for over 5,000 kills, is the ultimate. The ultimate allows for the, um, allows for you to be actually be able to track people, and make it, and actually run fast enough to actually reach them, and pretty much follow them the whole way. You can actually make ground really fast with this ultimate. It's really good. Um, so that, well, covering the tracking, it's not really the best part of it to me. The best part is the highlighting enemies at incredibly long ranges, which makes it incredibly easy to snipe people at even very long ranges, and and it's it's even better at longer ranges because enemies are gonna have a way harder time seeing you and a way harder time knowing that you're aiming at them, Ex unless you're Rafe, of course. But Rafe's just too good, I reckon. <laughs> Uh, but the thing is, it counters other legends very effectively as well. Bloodhound's ult is basically the time to shine. If you can use it at the right time, it can really help you wipe a squad, especially if you're going to longbow them from a distance. Of course, I'm going to have clips of this running throughout the whole thing, because this is pretty much how I play all the time. You pretty much just have clips of me using Bloodhound's ult and longbowing people, and then finishing them with the R301 or something. It's... It's a very, very good weapon. I mean, a ver yeah, a very, very good ultimate. And it's top tier with Gibraltar's and Lifeline's early game. Like, oh, Lifeline, I reckon her ultimate's worse than this, but I reckon it deserves to be with how good she is overall with her tactical and her passive. The tactical's good early game. Her, her passive's good all the way through. The passive's the only thing that's good all the way through. And her hitbox, of course, but... Um, her a tactical and they are um, a tactical and ultimate fade away as the game goes on. But a passive makes up for it, in my opinion. Um, so guys, um, I'm going to share with you my kills per game with all the characters except for Caustic because of Caustic. I've only got one kill from two games. It's not really enough data to make any reasonable conclusions. So basically, with Bloodhound, I've got a 2.38 kills per game. That's been going up recently. I think I've been getting better at the game. Um, Gibraltar's at 1.9, keep in mind that most of that was pre-patch, before Gibraltar was buffed, to give him a lot more tankiness, basically, with that, with that extra tankiness, he gets a minimum of, like, 35 extra health, which is a huge difference, I think, I reckon he's around a 2.5 to a 3, which is pretty much what everyone else is, Pathfinder's at, like, a 3.1, Bangalore's at a 3.1, Lifeline's at, like, a 3.05, Wraith's at, like, a 3.2, Mirage is, like, a 2.5, Basically, what you're noticing is that everyone's higher than Bloodhound. And like I said, I've played 5,000 kills with Bloodhound. I think I know what I'm doing as Bloodhound more than I know with Pathfinder. We've got like 100 kills with, and I'm still doing a lot fucking better. So obviously, there is a bad balance issue. I'm not good at any of these characters, right? Except for maybe Lifeline or Wraith. I don't know. I've played them for like 2,000 kills altogether, but... I'm, I'm not that good at... Pathfinder, at least. I'm... 
and I have barely played him for 30 games, right? And apparently, I should be doing 0.7 of a kill per game more. That's pretty ridiculous if you ask me. Like, the abilities, I reckon. I reckon if the, the hitbox makes that much of a difference, the abilities need to counteract that, I reckon. Um, so basically, everyone's doing better, except for the defensive characters, and Gibraltar's is only doing worse because I played him a lot before the balance patch. And then as soon as I started playing him after the balance patch, he was getting, I was getting 10 kill wins. And it was pretty, it was fun, like, he, the fact that he doesn't take flinch for his passive is what makes him a very good sniper, as well as blood. Um, but Bloodhound, it, Bloodhound works on the principle that you won't be seen, Gibraltar works on the principle that you can shoot him, but he can shoot you back and you'll actually take damage. So guys, I hope you enjoyed my, um, so basically, that's the conclusion why Bloodhound is one of the worst characters in the game. Uh, from my experience, he's got like one of the worst kills per game, I think that's enough evidence. And I've just gone into what, why I think that is. Um, so, so I've got the evidence here, but I, I'm trying to explain that, because you need to come up with the explanation. So the respawn can change it, so that it is balanced again. It is balanced. I don't want to, I don't want the ult to be balanced, because then... Early game, you're still just as screwed, right? Because you just got a tactical that's below average. You've got a you got a mediocre attack. You got a mediocre hey, passive, and you got a mediocre hitbox. You're basically like a C minus, basically, at early game because your tacticals are not very good. Everything else is average, like a C minus. Whereas you've got A plus for like Wraith and Gibraltar rate higher, I, I reckon, because the ultimate is also incredibly good as Gibraltar, but you've also got very good tactical, very good passive. Just, you just got one floor with the hitbox. Every, everything's good except for that. But with Bloodhound, there's only one thing good out of four. It's like, it's, it's worse, but it's not that much worse, if that makes sense. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, um, pretty much rant on how Bloodhound is one of the worst characters in Apex, and I really would like that to change. <laughs> I mean, I have fun playing Bloodhound, don't get me wrong. Bloodhound is a fun character. So, even if he doesn't get buffed, I'll still probably keep playing him, because of how fun it is to snipe people in the face with a Kraber. Um, with the old, it's one of the, my most fond memories at the start of when I was playing this game. I, in my second clip on Target City, it's one of the clips, right? I, I missed, I tagged the Bangalore once, I missed the second shot, I reload the gun and go ultimate, and then this guy's barely peeking outside off the fucking rock. And I headshot him with the Kraber with my third shot with it. It was fucking biblical. Then I rush up and clean up. And, it, it's a f and that, I think, cemented my love forever. That moment there with the Kraber. Also, give the Kraber more ammo, please. I'm so sick of running out. Like, so I know sometimes I play like shit with it and I hit like nothing, but sometimes I really just want like four, like four or eight more bullets. Why the hell should I need to get two fucking care package weapons? It's hard enough to get one. It's hard enough to find one Kraber, let alone two. I found three once and that was the best game ever. I dropped ten and there was a lot of Kraber headshots in there. It was fucking awesome. Right. I want more of that. <laughs> I shouldn't have to find three of them just to use them the whole game. I reckon you guys can agree on that, especially because the Mastiff gets 24 shells, Kraber gets 12 bullets. The Mastiff does more damage per shot than the Kraber does. Like, who designed that? Like, the Kraber just has everything, like, at least give it ammo. I could understand the poor handling, oh, the, the, the fact the you can't change the scope, the fact that it's slow. I can understand all that, because the damage is amazing, right? The range is amazing. I can understand all that, just give it more ammo so I don't have to fucking run out the whole fucking game. Thanks for watching, guys. I fucking really appreciate you, and I would appreciate it a lot more if you liked and subscribed, and leave a comment on your feedback on the video, and leave some suggestions on future videos if you have any ideas. That would be fucking amazing. Thanks, guys. I'll see you guys later. Peace. Oh, what is this? Give me that Eva A. Give me that Eva A. I'm going I'm gonna help Let's go, babe. Cause I missed so my shots. Got one! 
One of these guys is a self res. I'm a coming. Get out, you, you, you suck loser. 